Hi, Lou Pulsifer here, and today we're going to talk about the map. And you can see that I regard the map as pretty important because I've used a map as the background for all the slides I use in this course. Because the map strongly affects the action. And you can have maps that are generally regarded as dull or generally regarded as interesting on first look, and even more so after they've been played through. But in your typical level or adventure, the map only has to last for one playthrough for any given player. That's not always true because sometimes people come back to the same place again and again, especially in uh, tabletop role-playing games. But in general, one playthrough. And of course, the map can contribute to variety, which is very important in enjoyment of a game, and memorability, which is very important. The map itself can be memorable. Now, people who play multiplayer games, games for more than two players, but with two sides, such as Team Fortress and so forth, sometimes talk about great maps. That's because if there's any flaws in a multiplayer map, it's going to be discovered in the thousands of plays through that map. And some maps become favorites where others don't. So what applies to a map for a normal level or adventure applies even more to the multiplayer, although there are some things that you need to do for multiplayer that are not quite as important for individual play. So, maps provide obstacles, choke points, and channels. Choke points is pretty obvious, obstacles are obvious, and channels, well, think of the lanes in League of Legends or Dota 2. The natural movement paths that people follow. Maps also provide an opportunity for planning when the player or players knows about the shape of the map ahead of time, which is almost always true in multiplayer games, but often isn't true in individual levels or RPG adventures. So what kind of features might you have in maps? Well, you need to think about context. Uh, especially in multiplayer, people want to know where am I? Am I outside? Am I inside? Am I out in outer space? Am I near a lot of water? So forth and they want clear navigation so that players can tell where their objectives are. Now once again in individual play you as the designer might want players to be lost because it's very frightening. But in team play that doesn't work where you're playing the same thing over and over again. So you have to keep in mind what you're making the map for. In any case, you want features in the map that alter the player's rhythm. For example, as characters approach a building corner, they're going to slow down because there might be enemies just around the corner. And again, choke points are very important. If you have too many choke points on a map, especially a multiplayer map, then you get a standoff, and that's not desirable. You should have, if it's indoors, corridors facilitating long distance action and on the opposite side, places that only allow for short distance action. So in the first, you can shoot down the corridor, you can fire arrows, you can cast spells. In the second, it might be a melee thing. You should have places of darkness and light. Darkness is very powerful. Verticality, different levels, higher and lower both for movement and for shooting platforms or spellcasting platforms. You should avoid a dominant path or a camping site, somewhere where a player can hang out and pick off the enemy in a multiplayer game. Now for the rest of this lecture, I'm going to rely on Pascal Lubin's article about multiplayer maps. He suggests you need three things. Durability is the first one, because you've, the map has to withstand thousands of plays. 
So he wants open maths with many paths, not not choke points. You'll have choke points, but not, you need to have those multiple paths so the action isn't the same every time. Um, the third dimension needs to be used, and you need to increase the number of events, especially events that change tactics, because if players are playing these maps again and again, they're going to need variety. Accessibility is important in multiplayer maps. Especially for new players, they want to know where they are and where they should go, and how they get there. Once again, for individual play, levels, or adventures, you might feel that part of the game is figuring out where you are, where you should go, and how you should get there. But in multiplayer maps, not so much. And the third requirement is entertainment, which is difficult to define. But variety and memorability are part of that. Um, having maps with secrets or actions that require complete mastery of the game. Luban also suggests having map events such as moving elements or destructible background sections that players can incorporate into their tactics. And here's the reference to that article. Part 2, there's also a part 1. And here's another article about a particularly popular level for uh, a famous mod whose name escapes me at the moment. And I suggest you read both if you're interested in multiplayer maps.